Australia is full of geological surprises, but some of its strangest and most stunning features don't get the spotlight they deserve. In this video we're diving into three mind-bending natural wonders that blur the line between science and fantasy. First, a lake that looks like it was dyed with bubblegum. A vibrant pink lagoon so bright you'd swear it was photoshopped. Then we travel to the edge of a continent, where the land doesn't end in a gentle slope, it just stops. A hundred meter high wall of limestone plunges into the roaring sea, as if someone carved the coast with a knife. And finally we explore a hazy ancient highland, where sandstone towers rise like stone sentinels above the valley. These aren't fantasy locations, they're very real and they're hiding in plain sight across Australia. Lake Hillier in Western Australia Tucked away on remote Middle Island, off Western Australia's southern coast, lies Lake Hillier. A bubblegum pink lake so vivid it almost seems otherworldly. This small salt lake, about 600 metres long and 250 metres wide, is separated from the Southern Ocean by only a thin strip of white sand dunes and vegetation, creating a striking colour contrast between pink and blue. The surrounding shoreline is often encrusted with white salt, further accentuating the lake's rosy hue against the emerald green island foliage. Seen from above, Lake Hillier appears as a solid patch of cotton candy pink, encircled by paperbark and eucalyptus woodland, and a turquoise ocean beyond. A living palette of colours unlike anywhere else in the world. Unlike most colourful lakes, Lake Hillier's rosy hue is permanent. If you bottle a sample of the water, it stays pink. The secret lies in the lake's unique chemistry and biology. Its waters are extremely saline, and they host communities of halophilic or salt-loving microorganisms. One such alga thrives in the briny environment and produces large amounts of beta-carotene, a red-orange pigment also found in carrots. Additionally, halobacteria in the water contribute reddish pigments like bacteria rubrin. Together, these pigments tint a lake a vivid pink year-round. The high salinity also leads to salt crusts forming at the lake's edge, where halobacteria often live, giving the shoreline a rim of white and faint orange-red. Despite its unusual colour and chemistry, the lake's water is thought to be harmless to humans, though its isolation means few get a chance to wade into its pink brine in person. Lake Hillier was first documented by European explorers in 1802, when British navigator Matthew Flinders came upon this curious rose-coloured lagoon. Flinders recorded in his journal how the lake was of a rose colour, and so saturated with salt that plentiful crystals had formed along the shore. In fact, for a short time in the late 19th century, the lake was mined for salt. Their operations were soon abandoned. Today, Lake Hillier is part of a protected nature reserve and remains one of Australia's most eye-catching natural curiosities. Its remote location means it's not easily accessible. Visitors typically must charter a scenic flight or boat tour from Esperance to glimpse its neon pink waters from the air or a distant shoreline. This seclusion has helped preserve the lake's pristine condition. For those lucky enough to see it, Lake Hillier offers an unforgettable spectacle. A bright pink jewel nestled in emerald green island greenery, forever lapping against a beach of salt and sand. The Bunda Cliffs in South Australia At the far edge of the vast Nullarbor Plain, the Australian continent ends abruptly in a jaw-dropping wall of sea cliffs known as the Bunda Cliffs. For over 200 kilometres, the land plunges suddenly and dramatically into the Great Australian Bight, forming one of the longest uninterrupted lines of sea cliffs in the world. These sheer bluffs, towering 60 to 120 metres high, create the impression of standing at the edge of the world. On one side, the table-flat expanse of the treeless Nullarbor, on the other, an endless cobalt blue ocean pounding the cliff base far below. Travellers driving the remote air highway can stop at windy lookouts where the cliffs extend to the horizon in a gentle curve, vanishing into a haze of sea spray. With waves crashing against monumental chalk white walls and wheeling seabirds far beneath your feet, the Bunda Cliffs offer a humbling vista of land meeting sea in its rawest form. Geologically, the Bunda Cliffs are carved from an ancient limestone seabed that was uplifted tens of millions of years ago. The story of their formation traces back to the Eocene Epoch, when Australia split away from Antarctica around 50 million years ago, and the underlying Eucla Basin limestone was raised above sea level. The Nullarbor Coast, once submerged, became exposed to relentless Southern Ocean swells. Over eons, powerful surf and salt water aggressively eroded the soft limestone, undercutting and gnawing into the cliff's base. Bit by bit, the coastline receded northward, leaving behind a continuous towering escarpment, essentially the rim of Australia's limestone slab 
sliced clean by the sea. In the exposed cliff faces, you can read layers of geologic history. Along the lower cliff, a band of bright white Wilson Bluff limestone is visible, a chalky rock formed from an ancient seabed when Australia began drifting from Antarctica. Above it lie striations of whitish, grey and honey brown limestone, some containing marine fossils like mollusks. The very top of the cliffs is capped by a hardened layer of windblown sandstone and soil deposited in later epochs. This stacked palette of colours and textures, white base, golden brown top, is clearly visible when sunlight strikes the cliffs, each layer recording a chapter of lost geologic time. Experiencing the Bunda Cliffs is a visceral encounter with geologic grandeur. Standing on a gusty clifftop lookout, one can gaze along the line of cliffs as it bends away for dozens of kilometres, the Great Australian Bight churning at their feet. Far below, aquamarine waves batter the cliff base with a distant thunder, throwing up mist that clings to the escarpment. In several places, huge chunks of cliff have collapsed in the past, creating coves and beaches accessible only from the water. The sense of isolation is profound. This coastal stretch is sparsely inhabited and utterly exposed to the elements. Whether viewed from the deck of a ship or from the window of a light plane, the sight of the Nullarbor's abrupt 90 metre plunge into the sea is unforgettable. The Blue Mountains and Three Sisters in New South Wales Just 50 kilometres west of downtown Sydney, the landscape rises into the Blue Mountains, a vast highland plateau of rugged sandstone that has been sculpted by nature into maze-like gorges and pinnacles. Geologically, the Blue Mountains are a dissected sandstone plateau, essentially a huge block of ancient sedimentary rock that has been uplifted and then carved by erosion into a complex of ridges, cliffs and valleys. The story of its rocks begins over 250 million years ago, in the Permian and Triassic periods, when the region was a low-lying basin of rivers, floodplains and swamps. Over long spans of time, those rivers dumped vast quantities of sand and silt, which were buried and compressed into layers of sandstone and shale, with swamp vegetation forming coal seams in places. Later, tectonic forces gently uplifted the entire sandstone basin, raising it into a broad plateau. From that point onward, water became the master sculptor. Millions of years of rainfall and flowing rivers ate away at any weaknesses in the rock. The plateau was gradually dissected into a series of knife-edged ridges separated by steep-walled gorges, some plunging up to 760 metres deep into the earth. Sheer cliffs now flank the valleys, and dramatic rock formations crown many of the ridge tops. It's hard to imagine that this dramatic topography was once a relatively flat expanse of sediment, a transformation that speaks to the power of natural erosion on Australia's Triassic sandstone heart. The most iconic rock formation in the Blue Mountains is undoubtedly the Three Sisters, three slender sandstone spires that jut out from the cliff at Echo Point near the town of Katoomba. Rising roughly 900 metres above sea level, these pillar-like peaks are lined up along the escarpment's edge, almost like three sentinels overlooking the Jameson Valley. Geologically, the Three Sisters were once part of the main sandstone cliff itself. They formed as wind and water erosion worked their way into softer vertical joints or cracks in the sandstone, gradually isolating chunks of the cliff which became pinnacles over time. Today, the spires stand apart from the cliff by only a few metres. A narrow rock bridge or buttress connects to the first sister and they continue to be slowly worn down by the elements each year. The rock is horizontally layered, and you can see lighter orange-yellow fresh rock where recent erosion or rock falls have occurred. In a golden light of late afternoon or sunset, the Three Sisters glow with shades of amber and ochre against the green valley below, a spectacular sight often photographed by visitors. From the otherworldly pink waters of Lake Hillier to the towering sea cliffs of the Bunda Coast and the misty gorges and sandstone peaks of the Blue Mountains, these places prove just how weird and wonderful Earth's surface can be. They're not just beautiful, they're geological time capsules. Each one tells a story of ancient seas, shifting plates, relentless erosion, and strange chemistry. Stories written in stone, salt, and sediment over millions of years. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.